Can, can Corley, you said the response of the opposition was intolerable. What I find intolerable is the Taoiseach's response as somebody that sat on a public accounts committee last Thursday and listened to a complete litany of failure of governance. But it's no doubt something we'll return to later. In relation to today, we should not need the nurses to take to the streets to tell us for the second time only in 100 years that they went on strike, to tell us that the health system is not safe. Prior to this strike, which has been taken as a last resort, the nurses have repeatedly informed this government and successive governments and ministers and ministers for health, including yourself, Taoiseach, how precarious the situation was and remains, given the absence of frontline staff on the ground. Last August, for example, the INMO figures showed that August of that year was the worst on record for overcrowding in hospitals across the country. And of course, we know the detrimental effects of this overcrowding. Dr Fergal Hickey repeatedly tells us that on any given year, there are 300 to 350 premature deaths directly related to the time spent on a trolley. In response to these figures, the nurses took what action they could, stopping short of an action of strike at that point, and they went out and protested. They were forced into this strike action. Now, I, I give that background, and tomorrow we have the GPs going out on strike, telling us that their system is not working either. My question is in the context of that background in Galway City, where in 2017, two theatres closed in Merlin Park. There was a high-level meeting in October telling us that serious action would be taken and modular theatres theatres would be put in place. Now it's interesting that the two theatres were put out of action by rain, actual rain falling down Taoiseach, and that's what put the theatres out of action. All the while you're putting money into a rainy fund, not for our health system, not for our education or housing, but to bail out a financial crisis in the future. Two theatres closed because of rain. Now, I have a list here that I haven't the time to go into, and this is where trust and confidence comes into the system, as is the same thing with the children's hospital. Over the year of 2018, I and other TDs have repeatedly highlighted this. I was told in responses to questions that tender documents had gone out. I was told that contracts were to be signed. And here we are, 2019, and the two theatres are still closed. And the latest saga, the latest latest step in that saga is a consultant has written to all TDs in Galway West, unprecedented, on behalf of all his colleagues, um, to tell us that the situation is exactly the same as it was in 17. Now, my point and my question is, what has happened? When will the theatres be opened? One year ago, almost, you told me you couldn't take a hands-on approach, that the people in charge was the minister and management. One year later, no progress whatsoever. And I have to say, it goes to the heart of the difficulty that opposition have with you and your government. Absolute spin and lack of trust in answers. So today, I want a clear answer. What inquiries have been made by you or the minister in relation to the two theatres? Thank you. And when will they open? Thanks, Deputy. Um, just in relation to the first issue which you raise uh, on the Children's Hospital, uh, just to say to the House that uh, the terms of reference for the review um, by PwC uh, into the escalation in costs, uh, that they are, um, are being revised at present. Uh, but the review will deal with the accountability of relevant key parties, uh, functions and roles. The prohibition on making any findings against individuals uh, will be removed. Um, it will establish a sequence of events in relation to the cost increases experienced by the project, establish what was known, when and by whom, uh, and will cover the bodies including the MPH, DB, its committees, the HSC, uh, and also the Department of Health. And it will also be asked to identify any areas where potential cost savings or reductions, which are consistent with the applicable contractual undertakings, uh, may be found. Uh, in relation to Merlin Park, uh, Merlin Park University Hospital provides elective medical and surgical services, renal services and haemodialysis unit, two designated rehab units along with a number of specialist outpatient clinics. Leaks developed in the roof of the building uh, in the hospital that houses the two orthopaedic theatres in September 2017. Managers temporarily suspended operations for a week to facilitate repairs. Following the deferral of elective orthopaedic procedures in 2017, the hospital facilitated the transfer of elective sessions to University Hospital Galway on a limited basis with the support of Merlin Park staffing and eight orthopaedic elective beds. In addition, some minor procedures were undertaken in Hospital One at Merlin Park. In March, this is, this, this is the question and the answer. 
Uh, in March 2018, remedial work facilitated the opening of one theatre in Merlin Park, and Merlin Park University Hospital advised that they are working towards restoring the full elective orthopaedic service as quickly as possible. A tender process was recently undertaken regarding the provision of two modular theatres for orthopaedics on the Merlin Park University Hospital site. A successful vendor was selected for the project, an enabling contract has now been signed between the HSC and the modular provider. Contracts have been exchanged between, the, between both parties and is currently with the Nas with HSC National Estates Division. A planning application was submitted on the 20th of December 2018 and subject to a successful determination of that planning application, which I understand is outstanding, it's intended the work will proceed as planned. I really wish you would have addressed my question quicker and not given me a, a history lesson. I have all of the documentation here. I've raised it repeatedly. You're telling me contract documents have been exchanged. I was told twice during last year they already had been exchanged. We now are in receipt of a letter from the consultant orthopaedic surgeon telling us that 1,500 patients are waiting for complex joint replacements, spinal surgery, foot, ankle and shoulder surgery, while waiting lists continues to expand exponentially. Now that's the situation, chronic and acute pain suffered by these patients and you're standing up here t telling me that contract documents are going to be exchanged. At the very least, I would have expected you to come in to tell me what happened that they weren't exchanged last February when we, told, we were told they were being exchanged. At the very least to learn from the children's hospital and to come in and give us the information having made the inquiries. Last year you told me you weren't aware of the question, I hadn't notified you. Today I notified you of the question so that you wouldn't come in unprepared and you would have checked the situation. This is absolutely unacceptable in a city where the hospital there, the, the main hospital, is creaking at the seams on a congested site with 150 acres up in Merlin Park and we're going piecemeal and piecemeal and we can't even provide modular theatres, which aren't the answer actually. What is the answer is a new hospital. But in the meantime, a little bit of honesty about modular theatres. Yeah, Deputy, just a num number of things to mention. Um, I know that there are an awful lot of people waiting a very long time for uh, orthopaedic operations and procedures and often to see a specialist in the first place. It is important to acknowledge though that the number of people waiting more than 12 weeks, and that is the uh, Stonja Care target uh, for operations and procedures, is now at a four or five year low. And that includes hips and knees uh, and other orthopaedic operations. So we're making a lot of progress in that area, uh, but have a long way to go, but have a long way to go, uh, to go yet uh, in, that re in that regard. Uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of Merlin Park, uh, Count Corla, in terms of Merlin Park, you'll be aware, uh, very sadly and very unfortunately, uh, that the Galway Hospice planning application for Merlin Park was refused. So the Merlin Park solution uh, as a site for uh, a new hospital or hospital developments uh, needs to be borne in mind uh, given the planning problems uh, that exist in that particular site uh, with the hospice just refused. Again, to answer your specific question, a vendor has been selected for the project. Contracts have been exchanged between both parties. That is currently with the National uh, HSC, HSC National States Division uh, in relation to legals. A planning application was submitted on the 20th of December 2018 and subject to that planning application um, being successful, uh, work will proceed as planned.